Hello and welcome to this short introduction to the Museum of Human Diseases at St George's. I'm Carol Shields and I'm the museum curator. In this talk I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of the museum and I'm also going to share some of the stories of the museum with you. It is called a Museum of Human Diseases or a Pathology Museum, where pathology means the study of disease, because it contains the many different types of diseases that humans have suffered from over the last 200 years. And we have just over 2,000 different specimens in our collection that date back to the early 1800s. You can expect to see examples of infectious diseases, different types of tumours, genetically inherited diseases, heart disease, and diseases due to the lifestyle of the person, such as cirrhosis due to excessive alcohol or lung tumours due to smoking and all of these are represented in the museum. To understand the history of the museum, I want to take you back in time to the 1700s. Here you can see an anatomy lesson in progress at the Hunterian Anatomy School in Great Windmill Street in London. You can see the skeleton suspended from the ceiling and you can see the students in anatomy, all very well dressed in top hat and tails who were attending the lecture, as medicine was generally reserved for the wealthy in society at this time. But there was a problem for these lectures in anatomy, because very few cadavers or bodies were available to dissect at this time, and they instead had to resort to illegal means to obtain bodies, and a class of criminals known as resurrectionists were responsible for helping them to obtain these bodies from their graves. People in the 1700s lived in dread of their bodies being stolen from the grave after death. It wasn't unusual to hire someone to look after the recently buried. This is depicted in a drawing from this time in which the night watchman, the person tasked with protecting the recently buried, has caught a body snatcher in the act with the unfortunate person stolen from their graves dropped on the ground. Running away to the right, you can see William Hunter who ran a large anatomy school in London at this time. It was only after instances of murdered bodies being sold to the anatomy schools, most well known being the infamous Burke and Hare in Scotland, mm. that the law was changed with the 1832 Anatomy Act, allowing anatomists to use unclaimed bodies for dissection. Ultimately, it was the poorer people in society who were still dissected, with many of those dying in the workhouse, for example, being handed over to the anatomy schools for dissection. This is Sir Benjamin Brodie. Like William Hunter, he was a well-respected surgeon who worked at St George's for many years, as well as being a surgeon to the royal family. He taught students anatomy using his own privately collected teaching collection. It's worth noting that having your own collection of human organs depicting human diseases wasn't at all unusual at this time although of course it would be illegal today. And on his retirement in 1843, he presented this teaching collection to St George's Hospital. And it is from this date that we have had a pathology museum at St George's with a curator to look after and add to the collection. Brodie was particularly interested in bone diseases, as well as giving useful advice to his students, as you can see in this quotation here. And it is striking that we still have examples from his original collection that we still use for teaching today. The law has of course been updated since 1832. Bodies are now donated willingly to help train the future generations of healthcare students. And the current Human Tissue Act of 2004 regulates how we run the museum and look after the collection. We are not currently adding to the collection Instead, we aim to maintain and conserve this unique heritage and history of human diseases for the future. Let's learn a little more about what the collection looks like. The human organs must first be fixed to preserve the tissue and then placed in a glass or perspex jar for display. They are often dissected carefully beforehand to open up the organ so that the students can more easily see the pathology that is the human disease. Here, for example, in the middle, you can see a very old example of a stomach that has been dissected open to show a stomach cancer. The pots are often referred to as specimens, 
This may seem like an odd term, and I think it can sound rather clinical and detached, but it is a common term to refer to a sample taken from a patient, particularly for the diagnosis of disease. The museum collection gives us a unique insight into the history of medicine and the different diseases that people in London suffered from over the last 200 years. This is the spine of a patient with tuberculosis, a condition known as Pott's disease of the spine. You will know that tuberculosis infects the lung, but it can also spread through the bloodstream to infect sites outside of the lungs. Here the infection of the vertebrae of the spine has caused the spine to collapse. Before the development of antibiotics, tuberculosis was incurable, and we have many examples of this disease in the museum. We use the collection to support teaching at St George's. In this example, the students can learn more about heart disease. We provide labelled diagrams and accompanying information on our virtual learning environment. Here the heart has been dissected horizontally, with LV indicating the position of the left ventricle of the heart. The patient has had a heart attack, what we call a myocardial infarction, in which the blood supply to the heart muscle has been interrupted and this has led to the heart muscle being deprived of oxygen and dying. The patient survived the initial myocardial infarction, but the mural thrombus or blood clot, which you can see on the anterior part of the left ventricle, formed an embolism, travelled through the bloodstream to the brain and caused a stroke, leading to the death of the patient. Many students let us know that seeing the diseases in the museum in this way helps them to understand the lectures and tutorials from a visual and different perspective. Students usually have the opportunity to visit the museum regularly to draw from the collection. Last year, we were a valuable part of the Making Connections series of events and held online art and drawing sessions for both staff and students to attend. This year, we are developing an online collection of art tutorials to provide more opportunities for students to engage with the museum. We hope this will help to share the museum collection more widely and to develop a new public audience and interest in the museum. If you'd like to keep in touch, you can catch up with us on Instagram at sgwellmuseumarchives. Thank you, and I hope you have enjoyed hearing about the museum.